Okay, let me show you immediately uh, what we are going to try to do today. Uh, it's a very simple uh, scene I created just for this tutorial. So let me run it and hopefully it works. Okay. So I have our, my character, explore character, jump in, going around. There is a chest. If I go near to it, nothing happens. I press enter, I can't do nothing with it. You know why? Because I don't have a key. So uh, here is a key and here is a UI indicator which will show me clearly that uh, we, whether I have a key or not. So let's try to pick up the key. I have the key and then the UI indicator shows me clearly that I have it. And now if I try to go nearby my chest, I hope it will open. Nice, it opened. And now I have the object uh, which popped out straight from the chest and I can pick it up by pressing enter. So this is basically it, this is what we are going to try to do today. Very simple thing but I think it's very useful in many many games probably uh, this is something that you would need to have. Uh, so let's go straight to um, an empty project and I will show you how to do that from scratch. Okay so this is uh, almost empty uh, scene. Uh, an almost empty project. I say almost because I have already placed all these elements here, but I think at this point you should know how to do all of that. Uh, and I have also some events here. Um, this is purely just to resize the game window, to center it on the screen and to hide my invisible platforms because uh, they should be invisible. That's what they say. And um, let's get to the interesting part. So how, how the hell we make uh, it so that you can actually pick the key, you can, can open the chest and all the kind of interesting stuff, okay? Uh, so first thing we need to do here in, is to let the scene know when you pick the key. So if, if you have the key or you don't have the key, okay? So I just right click here, scene properties and edit scene variables. And I just create a new variable and I call it whatever I want, but I call it key and I set it to zero. So zero for me will mean that zero, you don't have a key. So zero keys, makes sense. Uh, hit apply and we have that already set it up. So next thing we need to make something happen when you pick up the key. Okay, so I have a new condition. Player is in collision, so search for collision with the key. And uh, maybe uh, I'll do it a little bit different from my previous example. I just actually make sure that you also need to press a key to pick things up or to open them. So add another condition and I press key, key pressed, return. So this uh, enter or return, whatever you want to call it. And we make sure trigger once, it's true. Okay, so it triggers just once. Uh, so what's gonna happen next? So first of all, we just delete the key. So we pick the key, delete an object because you picked it up, so it should disappear. Uh, another thing, obviously we need to change the, our scene variable. So it shouldn't be zero anymore because you don't have, it's not that you have zero keys, now we have one. So uh, search for variable, value of a scene variable, it's already here, key, we already created it, equals to one, okay? So we changed our variable and also we want to make uh, sure that user understand that you pick up the key. So you remember this uh, UI element, uh, we change its animation. And by the way, I have already animation ready for this. So if I double click, I have animation here, right? So this not animation, it's a static image, but uh, we have just outline of the key. And I have another animation here, which is outline with the key inside, okay? So this is, these are basically two states. You don't have a key, you have a key, okay? So now I want to make sure that we change the animation to that second one, okay? So I just pick key UI and search for animation. Change the animation equals, so it's not zero anymore, but it's one, so it goes to the other animation, okay? So let's test this whole thing and see if that works. So I walk here, nothing happens, blah, 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 and once I'm here and I press enter, I picked up the key and it's now in my UI as well, okay? So that's cool. 
um, that works, but you know, if if I actually try to open the chest, obviously it won't do nothing. So yeah, we need to do that part as well. So how do we do that part? So um, first of all, uh, we need to have another empty event. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I have also animations for this. So I have my chest. This is idle animation, basically this is what happens when it closed, so just one frame. And I do have uh, animation for make it open. This nice bounce animation, okay? Uh, by the way, I have a tutorial how to create this chest in Photoshop, so if you want to take a look, I put a link uh, in the description, so uh, that also might be interesting. And I don't put these um, animations into loop, because I want this one to actually finish at the last frame, so I just don't put loop here. Uh, and once again, you have animation 0, it's closed, animation 1, it's just opening, okay? I hit apply, and uh, the first thing we want to know uh, is like whether you are near the chest, so if the chest is in collision with my player, so you need to touch the chest first of all, then you need to press a key, so key pressed, return, we use the same key, return and enter. And we also need to specify that uh, if you do these two things, so if you touch the chest and you press the key, and if you have the key, and how do we know if you have the key? We can use the scene variable. So if the scene variable, value of a scene variable key equals to one, right? So if it won't do anything if, we, if it's gonna be zero, right? So. Uh, if those three things happen, uh, let's put the trigger ones as well, okay, so let's put it here. We want to open the chest, okay, so let's do that straight away. So we pick our chest and change the animation. Change animation equals to one, so from zero to one. So that's the other animation when the chest is opening and it will uh, stay on the last frame. So I'll run it uh, like this right now uh, just to see the result, okay. So if I go nearby, okay, nothing happens. If I press enter, nothing happens because right now the scene variable is zero. It means that we don't have a key. But if I go here and we press enter, here we go. Our scene variable now changed to one. So now if we go to our chest and press enter, it should open. And that's exactly what happened. Now our chest is open. But there is nothing inside, okay? So I think we can do better than this. And also the UI element still shows us that the key is there. So we need to do a couple of things here, right? So this is the most interesting part. So uh, let's first of all remove uh, from the UI uh, our key. So we choose key UI, animation, change animation equals to zero. So now it will change back to the other animation. Also we want to make sure that scene variable, uh, it goes back to zero because we don't have key anymore. We used it already, okay? So variable change key equals to zero. Unless you want to leave it, but you know, I think let's better remove the key. So we need to find another key for another chest. Uh, so that's all done. Uh, so let me see if that works. We pick the key, we open the chest and we don't have a key anymore. In the background, scene knows that the variable key is zero right now. But we need to uh, make something appear from the chest. Why you open the chest and there is nothing there, right? So we need to make it actually rewarding and very fun. So as I showed you in my example, you will have this actually object popping out of it like with a nice animation like flying and everything. So we're gonna do that thing uh, by using some physics. So don't be scared, like, uh, physics is fun, <laughs> I mean, uh, but it's gonna be a really simple thing, and uh, but the result will be pretty cool because you can have you can create this animation really easily just by using physics. So, um, as you imagine, first of all, uh, what we need to do is to apply some physics behavior to our bottle, okay? So let's double click it, let's go to behaviors, add behavior to object and choose physics engine. So we will leave almost everything like this. Uh, we don't need to change much for this example. Um, we just keep it dynamic because we actually want it to collide with the objects. 
Uh, I'll just stick here fixed rotation. I don't want my object to rotate. Uh, I just want it to appear like this. Uh, but it depends. If you want your object to rotate, you can just uh, untick it. But for this example, I'll just keep it like that. I want to add a little bit to restitution. So restitution is a, is a, a property that will make your object more uh, bounce more or less. So I'll just put something like maybe 3, 0 0.3. Maybe that's too much, but let's see. And I will leave everything else like that, okay? So let's hit apply and run our project and see what happens. Our, our bottle falls. It's because it doesn't see this as a platform. Because, you know, if you set uh, this uh, as, a, as a platform for your platformer character, it doesn't work with physics. Uh, it needs something more than that. So they don't interact with this. So uh, obviously we need to double click and add another behavior to our platform. And we need to add physics. So physics object will interact with another physics object. So, but we don't want to f this platform to fall. We need to be solid, it needs to stay there. So we just change type to static. And that's it, that's basically it. So let's play. And you see our uh, bottle, our elixir or potion or whatever you want to call it, fall and stops here, okay? Um, so now that we ha have set up our platforms to be physics as well and this bottle as well. Uh, let's remove it because we'll create it once we open the chest. And let's add another um, action here, right? So we open, we do all these things, the chest opens, we remove the key from UI, we change our variable and we create an object. So elixir, uh, create. And where do we create it? We create it in the position of our chest. So we type chest x dot x position. So and chest dot y position. Okay. So we create it there. We also need to make sure that it's on top of the chest. So we just change the z order of this. So elixir z order equals let's put I don't know let's put hundred just just in case. Uh, and let's run it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I take the key and I open the chest and it appeared there. But I kind of wanted to kind of fly out the chest and just go somewhere in the other position here and there, right? So we're gonna use a little bit more physics for that. Uh, so I add an action. I pick up Alexir. And we have some, uh, now that we have physics um, behavior applied to our uh, object here, we can use all of this stuff from physics engine. And uh, I would say we can use this one, apply force towards a position, right? So let's choose this one. We have a bunch of options here. So length, this is, uh, uh, this is as far as I understand, this is like how powerful the uh, force will be in this case. So I'll just, I don't know, I'll put something like two. And I want uh, to which position we will throw it. I will throw it just to the right of the chest. So I'll still pick the chest, X position, and add, uh, I don't know, 200 pixels to it. So it will throw the object to the exact chest X position, but we add 200 pixels, so it will go to the right. And I want to throw it a little bit up. So uh, chest Y. And we want to, if we want to throw it up, we need to go to the negative value because if you go down, it's plus. If you go up, it's uh, minus. So minus 200 as well. We leave these ones here uh, for a moment, and then press OK. So now let's see what happens. So our our potion should now fly uh, to the right. Okay. So let's open. Okay, that worked. And you hear, you see, it has a little bounce here. Uh, as well, so we, we can actually maybe add a little bit more to Y, maybe let's do like 300, let's see what happens. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to pick the key. Yeah, right. Okay, something like this. Uh, you can actually, to improve this animation, you can actually change some settings here, maybe you can reduce the gravity scale. You can do like 0 0.8, for example. You want some more bounce, you can do 0.5 and now you will see that the things change uh, immediately so we pick the key you see it bounces even more okay 
So uh, I think that's that's okay. You can play with these values. You can play, but you know, basic stuff is done and it works. And now the only last thing we need to do, we need to pick up our bottle. Uh, so player is in collision with our elixir and key key pressed return or enter trigger once is true we delete our bottle of elixir so it feels like you picked it up so you know it feels like this is all right but i will show you what will happen now I pick the key, I open the chest and I expect my bottle to fly out, out of it. But for some reason our bottle is not there. And I explain you why. So uh, I had this problem as well. So in this uh, example we say that if you touch elixir and you press return key, we delete elixir. But this thing happens exactly the same time we open the chest. So one, So we don't even see it how our object is created, we immediately delete it because we press enter here and here, right? So the way you can solve this, uh, we can uh, go back to use some physics here, right? Some of the events from the physics. It's gonna be very, very easy logic. Uh, I, I encountered this problem in my, in my own games and uh, I found a way to solve this. So we add another condition. So we also need to say that it's not only when you t uh, when Alexander touch our player and not only when you press the key, but also we want this object to kind of touch the ground, right? So then I just choose my Alexander and choose this collision, not the regular one, not this one, but this one because this is collision between two objects that have physics, okay? So when this is in collision with our invisible platform, because at the beginning when you create the object, it's not in collision with it. It just flies out of the chest. And then, only then, we delete Elixir. So, those things need to happen together. So, uh, when we touch uh, our um, potion, when we press return key, I just move it here. And when, uh, only when uh, our bottle is in the, in the um, collision with the invisible platform, so it's on the ground, only then we can delete it, right? So, let's run it now and see if that works. I pick the key, I open the chest, and now I can pick it up. So that's basically it. Uh, that's my solution to this uh, to this problem or for this feature. Um, there are many other ways to do all of this, uh, I know, uh, but this is what I, I, I came up with and I hope this is not too hard and I hope this is easy, easy to understand and uh, the result is good. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, uh, join my Discord server, you can suggest the uh, next videos you would like to see uh, about GDevelop or anything else. And thanks for watching and see you next time for another video.